So let's get to it, ladies and gentlemen, the future of art in Melbourne. It is my great pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, who is a distinguished guest. I just didn't think he'd appreciate me calling him that. Councillor Rohan Leppert is a music teacher and composer living and working in Kensington. At the City of Melbourne, Rohan is chair of approximately 372 committees. Um, you can check those figures later. Mainly focused on music and money. I did tell him I'd taken some liberty with his bio. You're all looking at me like, what the hell? He didn't write that. That is all me. Okay. <laughs> Councillor Leppert is a pinko greeno communista. Um, again, my words. <laughs> He was elected to council in 2012, I believe I did a fundraiser for him, as a member of the Australian Greens. He's all about frivolous things like sustainability and community and creativity, and um, he probably likes a soy latte. I don't know, but <laughs> I'm just guessing. I have decided tonight just to inject some of the comedic spirit into this discussion to give all of our um, speakers tonight a theme song. And for Rohan, I have chosen Eat the Rich by Aerosmith. He flew here tonight on Bromwell Bishop's helicopter um, with Tony Burke's kids. They're so proud of him. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Councillor Rohan Leppert. Thank you, Nelly. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, can I, too, respectfully acknowledge the traditional custodians on whose land we are gathered and pay my respects to their elders past and present? Can I also acknowledge Auntie Di Kerr and thank her for her very warm welcome. Please don't apologise for sharing your idea for brightening the city. I happen to agree with you. If I thought the city was exactly the way I want it to be, I would never have stood for politics in the first place. And I know that there have been lots of ideas shared throughout this, uh, the last few creative conventions and there'll be more ideas shared tonight. So thank you, Auntie Di, for your contributions already. Can I also please acknowledge uh, the curators of the Creative Convention series and this forum, Timothy Moore and Fit Murray. Thank you for everything you've done. And the speakers at tonight's forum, Ben Eltham, Fiona Twomey, Christian Thompson, Tony Yap, Eleni Arbus and Linda Roberts. On behalf of the City of Melbourne, welcome to Melbourne Town Hall. I want to thank all of you for coming to this forum to discuss the opportunities and the challenges for the arts in Melbourne. This forum is, as you know, part of the City of Melbourne's commitment to build closer ties with the arts community and to keep the conversation open between the city and the creative sector. Our perspective will be enriched through the range of speakers and views we will hear tonight, and we hope that yours will be too. As Nelly has mentioned, the 2014 to 17 City of Melbourne Arts Strategy is why we are here today. The strategy was based on public consultation through polls, forums and conversations. We listened to the community and tonight's forum is an example of our commitment to keep that dialogue going and that conversation alive. The perhaps obvious but guiding conclusion from our arts strategy consultations was that creativity begins with the artist. We want Melbourne artists to know that as a capital city local government, your needs to support your practices are our needs. Your desire to continue making new and exciting work is our desire. We are committed to Melbourne as an incubator of ideas and creativity, as a city that knows the value of artists and one that works to ensure that as the city grows, the arts community grows with it. And unlike the federal government's blatant attack on the arts sector, to prevent it acting freely, unhindered and at arm's length from ad hoc political interference at the City of Melbourne, we do strongly believe that the creative freedom of the artist is fundamental to a flourishing and vibrant arts ecology. It's undoubtedly a difficult time for the arts sector, with both the aggressive brandis cuts and also with changes within the state government's funding structures. The future is unclear, but there is hope. At a time where things are a little on edge, it is more crucial than ever that the City of Melbourne continues to support and work with artists and the arts sector. I'm not here to overstate political positions on the current state of play, but I can say that we are in support of artists having more opportunities for support and that we don't want this to be at the expense of the Australia Council and the opportunities that they afford to artists and the sector, particularly through small to medium organisations. Although the City of Melbourne can't pick up the federal government shortfall, you can rest assured we continue to believe in direct support to artists to create. We have made it our mission that Melbourne Arts has a diverse and confident future. Artists are integral to this city. 
Imagine Melbourne without artists and without art, and what a desolate place that would be. The arts play a special role in the success of any city and in ours more than most. As artists, we know the unique challenges we face in making our innermost personal creativity for audiences to watch, interpret, critique, or enjoy. We consistently put ourselves on display to tell our stories to the world, whether it is through a play, a script, piece of music, sculpture, or painting. The unpredictability of funding bodies and government support only adds to the challenge, especially in times of such rapid growth and change. But it is the artists who are the storytellers of our city. Their works enable us to imagine on a wider scale and lead us to places we have never been. Their creations encourage us to ask questions, evoke opinions, and instill in us a need to explore ideas further. Artists allow us to see ourselves and our own community through a different lens, and it's the artist who gives us narratives with moral, emotional, and spiritual meanings that allow us to understand and keep us believing and enjoying life. All of these things are what makes the act of creation so invigorating and rewarding, but also why the arts community needs firm commitments of support from government through infrastructure funding and policy. Government cannot discount the power of the artist. Government inevitably must, however, indicate how much it will support the city's creative soul, and that is measured by the extent to which it supports its artists. As you would all be aware, the City of Melbourne works to support artists by providing space to create, spaces to present, and funding in the form of residencies, grants, partnerships, and commissions. We produce and program throughout the city and run a number of arts events and festivals. Our arts programs and are rich and wide-ranging, from the recently announced Public Art Melbourne program, to Art Play, Australia's only art centre for children, to Arts House, a program of cutting-edge experimental contemporary practice, to the management and programming of the Town Hall Grand Organ and a collection of over 8,000 objects in our arts and heritage collection. We've established creative spaces for writers, artists, and arts organisations to be located in the city. For example, the Meat Market has been established as a standalone venue for hire. The Creative Spaces program brokers and creates affordable studio spaces for artists across the city. The Dirty Dozen exhibition spaces are offered free of charge to artists, and Arts House offers development space for performance artists and we continue to advocate for affordable and secure work and living spaces for the pursuit of creativity. Tonight's forum is one of the many outcomes of the City of Melbourne's art strategy and an indication to you, the creative sector, that we want to hear your thoughts and that this is an ongoing conversation between you and us. The forum is a culmination of a series of roundtable discussions with the sector hosted by Timothy and Phipp. The discussions explored the key themes of affordability, accessibility, infrastructure, and creativity. These lively forums were held throughout the city, and they were fascinating. We discussed concepts of what it means for the city to stay current and innovative, to keep thinking and redefining what creativity looks like. One forum discussed the serious danger that the creative community may be pushed out of Melbourne if it becomes less affordable, and we delved into the disastrous effects that this would have on our city. You shared your views on how the city needs to continue to show leadership by setting high standards and practice what we are advocating for. We are practicing tonight with you. And I thank you for being part of this conversation. So tonight we are looking to you to comment, to question and perhaps to debate, to help our understanding of the issues, opportunities and challenges the sector faces and help advance our contributions to the arts in Melbourne. We are fortunate to have writer, journalist, and researcher Ben Eltham, writer and director Fiona Tomey, visual artist Christian Thompson, and dancer and choreographer Tony Yap, alongside Arts Melbourne's Creative Spaces Program Manager Eleni Arbus and Public Art Melbourne Program Manager Linda Roberts to share their thoughts about several pivotal areas of the arts and the opportunities, challenges, and issues that we face. We encourage an open and ongoing dialogue and we welcome your ideas and input. Thank you very much for coming along tonight and being a part of this very important conversation for our city, and enjoy your evening.